I'm Rob Laubacher. I'm a research scientist and associate director at MIT's Center for Collective Intelligence. Our mission is to understand uh, a range of new systems that have emerged over the past decade as the internet has become um, a global phenomenon. So things like Wikipedia, where thousands of people will collaborate together to create an, a really high quality uh, intellectual artifact, or uh, Google, where Everyone creates web links, which implicitly are judgments about the quality of the web, and then Google's crawlers and algorithms serve that up to everyone when they type in a query. So we think these kinds of systems are just the beginning, and our mission is to understand them better so that the world can use this new approach more effectively. So the the idea of the collab is to, um, we've got this big problem, climate change, very complex, affects everyone, lots of interconnected parts, uh, kind of daunting if you think about it, but we also, in the last decade, there's been this emergence of a new approach for addressing complex problems, that's kind of internet-enabled collective intelligence. So the example of, of systems like open source software development or Wikipedia make us think that if we could harness the collective intelligence of many people contributing their ideas and perspectives that we might be able to crack this problem in a, in a new and novel way. So that's our goal. Uh, and we, you know, have been at it for a couple of years and we feel like it's a multi-year effort, but we're excited and pleased about what's happened so far and we're excited about pushing forward into the future. So what are some of the, the interesting projects and, and proposals that have come about and where are those, where are those okay, going? Okay, well first I should sort of say how we're, so, so what we've done in the first couple of rounds of activity is we've structured the uh, activity of the community around uh, two contests. So in 2010 we had a contest which was focused on climate diplomacy uh, of the kind that happened in Copenhagen in 2009 and is ongoing through the United Nations process and through agreements that countries make together. And we asked the question what international climate agreement should be reached. And uh, so I'll talk about that year's results. We had uh, about 30 proposals that came in. Um, the contest ran for about a month. Um, we had four finalists that were selected by a panel of expert judges. Uh, people in the community then voted on those finalists and the judges also selected the ones that they liked best. So we had one uh, proposal that actually was both an expert selection and the top vote getter and then another one that um, got uh, the second number of votes and then a third that was the, the judges other selection. So three were named winners and the uh, proposals uh, creators went and attended briefings last year at the United Nations in New York and in Washington. So we had an audience uh, in front of policymakers. Uh, I think they found <clears throat> many of the ideas to be interesting and exciting. Um, I don't think they are yet ready to say, oh, you've cracked the problem, you've got the answer, but I think they were excited at this approach. I think they were excited at the idea of regular citizens and students giving their ideas, and they kind of want to see where it's actually uh, Representative Ed Markey's um, committee. Um, it wasn't the committee. It was it was it was a brief. It was a briefing as opposed to a hearing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the primary people who were attending were staff members, and uh, we had some interesting conversation and some interesting back and forth. Um, so that was the group, and we were hoping to be able to work with them again. Now for this year, we have another round of activity another contest and the focus this year is on the green economy which is one of the themes that the UN will be pushing in the Rio Plus 20 conference next year. And so our question for this year is uh, what, how should the global economy or how should national economies evolve uh, over the next century given the risks of climate change. And uh, we have the contest running uh, with entries being uh, accepted through September 30th. So if you're listening to this, check it out and, and submit an entry. Great, great. So what what's what's been what's been brought well, in so far, and what are yeah? What's I mean, that? I think one of the things that we found uh, is a universal uh, uh, phenomenon of human nature. So last year we uh, found that all of the proposals came in on the last day or the last deadline. two days, <laughs> and so we thought, well, we'll have it run longer. People can get feedback. Well, it turns out that everybody seems to be waiting until the end. Uh, we've talked to people who are working on proposals, we've, we've encouraged them and invited them to submit them earlier. But so far we've got, I would say, 
only a handful of proposals that are kind of fleshed out. The rest of them are still kind of works in progress. There are about 20 in the system right now, but only a small number of them are really complete or even close to complete. And then I think other people kind of are, their drafts are in there. I think other people are, are waiting till the end. I think some of it is strategy too, because they don't want other people to, maybe they, they're afraid that their ideas will be poached. So uh, I think what will probably happen is just as last year, there will be a tsunami of, of, uh, of things at the end of September. Uh, one thing we did try to do this year, and I hope that maybe uh, we'll encourage a little bit of participation, we've lined up a couple of groups of experts to provide feedback. So proposals that are in by the end of August, by August 31st, will get feedback from experts. Uh, and uh, the, uh, we may do the same thing for September 15th. So we're trying to encourage people to get their work in a little bit earlier so that the community can comment on it, there can be room for improving it over time. Um, but this is, uh, you know, this is all early going, we're still working out the kinks, we're still figuring out how to do this in the, in the best way. And I, just, I do want to point out one thing uh, for next year that we hope to do is we actually think that this is such a big and complex problem, one of the uh, things that we're looking to do next year is to divide the problem up into uh, sub problems and so um, you know there's different geographic levels at which you can address this there's the global you know climate negotiations there's national policy there's activity at the state and local or city level uh, there are things people are trying to do in their households so there's a whole range of you know, sort of geographic levels you can attack the problem and then when you think about well there's you know adopt adoption of technology there's lobbying politicians there's uh, ways that you can change social behavior, there's ways that you can um, educate or get media messages out there. So there's a whole range of, of different ways you, you can sort of think about the problem. So one of the things we're hoping to do for next year is to, is to break the problem up into parts, uh, channel people to the area where they have expertise and interest and let them work in those domains. And so one of the one of the proposals that, that really caught my eye was kind of this whole systems approach. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was wondering if you have any comment on that or what that kind of looks like, and if there's been much in terms of information technology elsewhere that has <coughs> kind of shown that looking at things from a whole system approach is. Well, I mean, I think that the systems approach has actually been very influential in in, in uh, environmental thinking. Um, there's a group at MIT called the System Dynamics uh, Group. Um, it was founded by a uh, professor, uh, Jay Forster, who was one of the inventors of, of the radar in the uh, era of World War II. He actually observed some of the phenomena of electronic systems um, that he felt he um, could uh, suitably apply some of those principles to human systems and develop this science of system dynamics which um, involves modeling and, and trying to uh, have models that actually show the real behavior of systems. So, so the simulation models that are part of the Climate Colab are actually done by a group of system dyna dynamics modelers who have come out of MIT. So that's, that's one place for system thinking. I think another place um, that it's important is I think that some of the work in the 70s by people like Donella Meadows, who was a, a student of Forrester's and, and was thinking systemically about environmental issues. Um, it was quite influential then. I think that we had a period in the 80s and 90s when we, uh, you know, they, they were the people, Meadows was one of the people involved with the Limits to Growth uh, book that came out, which was influential at the time, but then was subsequently uh, seen as um, uh, sort of the, the discovery of lots of big oil fields and, and th there was a perception that this that the uh, limits of growth approach was wrong I think it may have not been wrong it may have just been a little early um, so we, uh, we, we I feel that the systems approach is something that has had a lot of influence and a lot of importance in the environmental uh, domain and, and I think it's it's certainly something we're hoping to be able to have you know the feedbacks between these different sectoral uh, and different, you know, parts of the problem to be to be represented in the solutions that our system develops. Okay. Okay. Um, what is the what does the collab see coming out of all this in the long term? Well, I think our goal would be that the collab as a as a 
web-based community of concerned citizens and students and we also have experts who are part of our community we're increasingly trying to create connections with policymakers that this becomes a part of the way that the world deals with this problem um, now at the moment it's dealt with in the corridors of power policy makers legislative assemblies the UN uh, we hope that over time we can get a foot in the door, become part of that conversation, that we can create closer connections so that citizens are able to contribute their ideas, the policymakers are interested in seeing the citizens' perspective, the experts find the collab a way to communicate their expertise to the citizenry and to the, to the policymakers. So I think there's a, a role that could be played and that's we're hoping that the collab can somehow have a place at the table over time and be part of the um, of solving the problem, we hope maybe in a in a better way, because we're going to do something about climate change um, as a kind of human race. The, the question is whether we could be, you know, doing it better. So our hope is that with the collab and with the power of web-enabled collective intelligence, that we can come up with better solutions, a better process, you know, and ultimately, um, you know, find ways to address this problem more effectively than we might otherwise without this new tool.